What is up, it's Figure Hunter, and we are out on a golf course, and on the outskirts of a golf course, and I am limping around because I have tweaked something in my knee doing some snatch work yesterday, and that is a big discouragement. So, today's video, we're gonna compare the Garmin Forerunner 165 to the Garmin Forerunner 265, because there's a primary and significant difference between the two in what content or analytical value one over the other provides. There's also some minor design differences. So what we're gonna look at in the video today is are those just sort of like simple design videos, uh, design differences. We're gonna look at the similarities of just the basic things that they provide that are the same and the primary differences. What this is not is a comprehensive breakdown of all of it, the differences and all of the you know minor variations between the two. The bigger thing is that the 165 is a $250 or $300 watch, and the 265 is a $450 watch. And on the surface, looking at the design, looking at some of the broad capability similarities, they look like they are similar watches, but a big price tag difference. But if you are looking for a watch for training, for real training guidance, real training direction, and a real training companion, and training analysis, you absolutely have to look at the 265 and absolutely not look at the 165. So the 165 is just missing some gargantuan components of training, training direction, and training analysis. So with that, let's look at the design similarities and go from there. All right, so the breakdown between the two, obviously they are like the big brother, little brother between the 165 and the 265. Now this is not the S, the S would be smaller than the 165, but you can see that they they look like a mirror image. There's a few minor differences. We'll just look at it sort of in general design, but if you're looking at it sort of hands-on, they both have the five button configuration. They both you know, have a similar style band. We'll look at the back in a second. Um, this has got a flat glass, this has got a domed glass, but you know, this one's actually not as strong. This is Corning Gorilla Glass. This is like reinforced or strengthened glass, but they, they look like big brother, little brother. And we'll talk about some of the nuanced differences. So the 165 is 43 millimeters. The 265 is 46 millimeters. The screen on the 165 is 1.2 inches. The screen on the 265 is 1.3 inches. Now, looking at the screen, just a side note, the 1.2 inches is the same screen size as the Mark $2,500 Garmin watch. I don't know why they didn't put a bigger screen on that. So 1.3, this is the same size as the Epix. This is the same size as, um, you know, higher end watches with the AMOLED. So 265 versus 165. And on the back, they both have the same sensor. They both have the same charging port connector thing. Um, so there's no real differences there. This has got a smooth round edges on the 165. This has got the ridge built into the 265 around the heart rate sensor. I would probably bet that the smooth edges will compress against your skin better, but I'm just sort of it's all hypothesis and I don't know. But that's how the differences look. They both have quick release. So this is 20 millimeters, this is 22 millimeters. So those are the similar things on the body and construction. All right, so looking at the design similarities, let's look at just sort of what's feature similarities. So the primary sort of content, fe not all the feature similarities, but the feature similarities that are of value and some importance. Um, so when you look at what they both include as far as value and benefit and features, we'll just focus on this, uh, on the 165. You know, they have both have VO2 max, uh, they both have recovery tracking from the last hard workout to the next hard workout. And the primarily the 165, and we'll talk about the nuances in a sec. Okay, so we're looking at the basic tenets of what the 165 has on the broad spectrum of wellness features. It has the full set of wellness features. Now the first, which I haven't been wearing this watch, so is the body battery feature, which takes into account your stress and how it's affecting your recovery, as well as the benefits over the course of like positive things low re relaxed day, taking a nap, sleep score, which gives you full in-depth analysis. I do believe it's gonna get the sleep coach, which is not yet visible on here. So the sleep coach would look like this, where it's sort of clocking your time and how much time you should shoot for it, it, when you go to sleep that night. Nap tracking, 
Obviously it's got the full HRV, nightly HRV tracking. So those are the suite of like the full wellness capabilities that you're getting on the 165 that are common amongst almost all the watches. Um, so sleep analysis, body battery, which is like a 24 seven thing, HRV, which is more of a nightly in-depth. And then obviously all the minor sort of benefits that are just sort of broad to the whole class of watches. Um, so that'd be the same on both. And so the design, you know, similarities and the wellness type similarities. Okay, and so next we're gonna look at the differences. So the biggest and most significant differences when it comes to training and training tracking, training analysis. Let's dive Bigger in. Bigger differences on the training side. So that's where the features are more felt difference um, because you are missing. So if we take the last activity, not that one, um, one thing you'll see, and it might be not be uh, readily apparent, but we'll try to see, is um, when you go into the activity, you get all the same stuff, same stats. So this was an activity I did on a watch that had full training load tracking. So on the 165, it will normally not have the load number there. So the 165 does one step better than the Vivo Active 5 and one step better than the Venue 3 because it gives you this aerobic impact of this one workout and the anaerobic impact of the one workout, which the 265 obviously does. But it's only evaluating the impact of that workout on that metric and then a recovery time metric on the 165. But there's no long-term training load tracking or long-term training analysis tracking on the 165. So normally if you had done a workout and you had tracked it on the 165, you would not even see the load score. So you wouldn't even get that benefit. Um, so you would just have this evaluation for this one particular workout, the impact you had on your aerobic training effect and your anaerobic training effect. So what is also included is, you know, you would get a load score. So we'll take that out. And now everything else is going to be based on what the 265 offers that would not be included um, in primary form. So is these components. So number one, it's just tracking your load over time. So it's tracking your recent load on an average daily basis relative to the longer term load. It's just basically giving you a rigor score for every workout and comparing that rigor score over the course of seven days relative to 28 days to see if your training volume for this week is more than it has been on average in a longer term period of time. And so training load tracking. So that's one thing that's that's missing. It's the every other watch, you know, below this or the 165 is missing the type of exercise load tracking, whether you did aerobic, highly aerobic or low or anaerobic, highly aerobic or lowly aerobic types of workouts. And we'll see that in a different way in a second. And then your load ratio, which is evaluation of your recent versus your long term. Are you pushing your fitness higher? So this broad spectrum of load tracking, both the score itself as well as how it compares in past, you know, to your past training volume is missing on the 165. That is a huge missing piece. That's a big gap differentiator between the 265 and the 165. So the load tracking itself, you can see here the load focus. This is just a different version of that one chart we saw on the other one. But you can see like how much time you've accumulated in the anaerobic, lowly aerobic, and highly aerobic categories. And it gives you a specific recommendation for how you might want to change what types of workouts you are doing. All of this is missing on the 165. Now the 165 obviously does your VO2 max, HRV, and your recovery time, but they're missing these two components, the type of focus on, of your training and the load of your training, which all culminates together to the training status, which is a recommendation for how your fitness is improving or not improving. You know, it's got like eight different categories, whether you're maintaining your pushing forward, your recover, your peaking and your recovery, preparing for a race, whatever it is. So the training status and all of its components, primarily the training load is missing and then training readiness is missing. Now I differing opinions about training readiness, but this is fully missing from the 165. Training readiness takes into account your recent training coupled with your recent health and wellness aspects to determine are you ready for a hard workout that day, your sleep, whether you're fully recovered, and that's a big driving component, 
your HRV status, like how you've been trending in your broad recovery over the last seven days, your acute load, which is that same number, same score, which you know only lives on the 265, not on the 165, your sleep history and your stress history. So it takes into account varying versions or aspects of physiological data and training data to culminate into an estimate of your readiness to hit a hard workout today. I would say that's right, 59, that feels pretty right. My I backed off my training so that I could go harder today. That was, that was the plan. And so these are the primary things that it includes that the 165 doesn't include. So this is a gap. This is the gap. This is why the 265 is really the only truly comprehensive wellness and training watch at the cheapest price that Garmin offers. Um, technically, you can get some of these things on the Instinct 2, which is a little bit cheaper price point, but a terrible screen in my opinion um, and a worse experience you would want to go to the 2x so anyway the other thing is that if you were to go into uh, an activity let's say you were going to go into a run you also would not get dual band now with the 165 looking at gps tests other reviews reviewers have done this doesn't have dual band which means it can lock onto two satellites at the same time the 265 does and it will auto select between whether we have to hold on to two satellites or whether we can just live off one and have the same you know accuracy but other reviewers that have tested gps have shown that garmin's gps antenna design and their single gps singular gps tr lock is better than some other dual bands out there so Either way, it's got the dual band. And then the last thing is a major differentiator or somewhat for some you know, training types is that the 265 has the multi-sport triathlon. So you can do multi-sports in the same singular activity rather than tracking singular one sport start stop, one sport start stop. So you can do whole triathlons here. So those are the primary differences between the two of these just to get a a, a, a a basic breakdown because there's a lot maybe of nuances or this or that and maybe this has got less activity profiles than this a lot of that stuff is just sort of bs to me the primary thing the difference is that the 165 does not have the advanced training analytics and that is a major gap if you are looking for a training watch and you have to go with the 265 to get that full suite of all the different aspects analytically of your training and recommendations therein. So it has all the wellness, not the full training, has all the wellness and the training on the 265 plus triathlon plus dual band GPS and uh, you know more sport profiles. So there it is. Okay, so in summary, what do we see? We see that the 165 is a pretty awesome looking watch. It does look and feel so similar to the 265. It does provide all the wellness components and the primary things that Garmin is an industry leader in when it comes to wellness, when it comes to sleep, when it comes to HRV, recovery time, things like that. So it has all the wellness components, but it is really missing the guts, the content, the primary, the meat and potatoes of the training components. So if you're looking for a watch that just has, you know, the wellness aspects and a pretty design, then the 165 is a great and affordable, simple running watch and will give you that wellness component. But if you're really looking for a watch that's gonna complement your training, analyze your training, evaluate your training load, and give you detailed analysis of your training so that you can take that information into your training and make adjustments and changes, you can't look at the 165. And additionally, you cannot look at the Venue 3. You cannot look at the Vivo Active 5. I'm going to do a whole video comparing all of those. You have to look at the 265. The 265 is the only and least expensive comprehensive training watch. You could go to the Instinct 2, but that's a whole different experience. And I didn't like the screen. The 2X has it, but that's the same price. The 2X has all the content components, but it's the same price as the 265. So 265. Biggest, brightest, most beautiful, fully feature rich on the basic things that you can find in the Garmin lineup, not the 165. It's the Figure Hunter. Thanks so much for watching.